water this Sunday afternoon. We are so glad that you are here, whether you are in person worshiping with us or if you are watching this later on YouTube and um, enjoying just the music and prayers and scripture and everything here. We are so glad to be out here. If we haven't met, my name is Christina and I'm one of the pastors at Wrightsville and we are along with um, Carrie and Nick and Justin. We lead a gathering that used to be called Sundays at 6 and for the meantime is going to be called Worship on the Water as we are worshiping not at 6 but on the water. So, you know, nice descriptive name. We actually are going to continue to be meeting out here at 4 o'clock every Sunday afternoon as long as weather permits. So if it gets to be too freezing cold or if it gets to be too windy and rainy or something like that, we will stop. But try to pick it up again and hope for more good weather. The four o'clock time is pretty good for that. So yeah, just go ahead and uh, we'll send you a note um, on Instagram and Facebook and our e-blast and all of those things if we're not meeting. But otherwise, feel free to see us out here or online every Sunday. Next Sunday, we actually have something different that we are doing. We are going to be having a drive-in Christmas car caroling. And so we invite you to um, park in the gravel lot over by the church. Um, Carrie and the band are going to be leading us in some Advent and Christmas songs. Normally preachers are big on, we got to wait till, till Christmas to sing Christmas songs. And this is not the year for that. We are going to be singing Christmas songs in the safety of our own cars. And so you're invited to come, uh, drive in. We're going to have an FM transmitter. And so you can wear your Santa hats, your Christmas sweater your hot cocoa or whatever you've got in your car bring kids and families and we are going to have the whole service over the transmitter so i would like to invite you to just take a moment and maybe take a breath maybe to settle yourself here in god's creation or settle yourself wherever you are worshiping with us and let's pray together this Sunday as we celebrate Christ our King. Oh Lord God, we thank you that you are the King of all creation, that you are our King, and that you do not leave this world to its own devices. God, that you keep showing up, that you keep loving us, that you keep relentlessly seeking to make this world more whole. We ask, oh God, that you would speak to us here in, in our speaking and in our listening. May the words of our mouths and the thoughts and meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, oh God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen.
and today is Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. And if you think of New Year's being on January 1st, then the Christian New Year starts the first Sunday of Advent. So this is like New Year's Eve. Like we are, uh, you know, we're about to, if, if you're ready to get, get a year done with and get on to a new year, this is a wonderful opportunity to do that. <laughs> and so at the first Sunday of Advent, we start again thinking about uh, Jesus being born in a manger and looking forward to that and also looking forward to Christ coming in final victory. And so today, Christ the King Sunday is when we celebrate that Christ is triumphant um, over all evil and sin and death and all of those things and that will someday that kingdom will come to pass on earth as it is in heaven. So this uh, scripture kind of honors, honors that and it talks about shepherds. So Ezekiel is one of those weird prophetic books in the Old Testament, prophetic Prophetic, not pathetic, um, although it is a, a little bit hard to understand sometimes. So Ezekiel is writing to a people who are in exile. <laughs> a lot of us may feel like we are in exile as well. Um, but this was written to the people of Israel who were far from everything they knew and, um, and whose kings and leaders and priests and all of those people who were supposed to lead them were not leading them in the way that God had called them to. They were looking out for people who were rich or powerful and not folks who were poor and orphaned and widowed. Um, they were kind of trying to themselves get rich and not doing justice towards God's people. And so that is the context for what, um, for what this is. And so as we read it, I invite you to think about this um, thinking about what what does it mean to be to be God's people in a broken world and also how do you see Jesus through this lens of the shepherds described by Ezekiel so hear God's word thus says the Lord God I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep so I will seek out my sheep I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, I shall judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, but must you tread down with your feet the rest? When you drink of clear water, must you foul the rest of the water with your feet? <laughs> and must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet and drink what you have fouled with your feet? Thus, Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Thanksgiving week, and so I'm thinking about food as I always do. <laughs> There's rarely a week in which I don't think about food, which is fair because what else can we do right now but eat? <laughs> I just got done with 14 days of quarantine after um, being exposed to a friend who thankfully outdoors with masks and six feet away, we're hanging out. We work the system, it works. So, <laughs> yeah, if you work the system, it works, folks. Um, but I found myself doing a lot of eating. <laughs> so maybe pre preparing for Thanksgiving, I don't know. Maybe it's just the 2020 pastime. I um, felt this huge gift of love when people said, can I bring you something? I said, well, the nice lady from Target Delivery just brought me lots of things. So really you don't have to, but then some folks just sort of rudely did anyway. Um, they rudely brought me a roast beef dinner with mashed potatoes and rolls and a chocolate bar. They rudely brought me a little bit of spaghetti casserole, warm, fresh out of the oven. They rudely brought me um, spaghetti sauce and spaghetti and a bottle of wine and an old Keurig they had that uh, was actually just a week old and it was the wrong model with a bunch of those little K cups, you know, which I normally try to do sustainable, but I'm like, you know what, right now we're just gonna stick it in the thing and press the button. This is the way 2020 is going, right? I found myself eating and eating and, you know, and then cooking a little bit too, um, all ready you know, getting ready for that Thanksgiving feast. Yesterday on my, you know, 14th day of quarantine, my true love gave to me another Target delivery, but I got to get out of the house and go to the Target where they loaded it in the truck. You know, I decided to get some of those Thanksgiving staples and kind of having made the decision with friends and family and, um, you know, that were far away that we were going to, you know, do a Zooms giving with all of the folks that, <laughs> Cruelly, I've been seeing in my Facebook memories all of the Thanksgivings of days past, you know. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel blessed throughout the years to have spent lots of Thanksgivings away from people. The first one wasn't away from people, but it was living in China, which was just a regular work day. And then some of the students and foreign teachers came and we tried to explain what a turkey was and we had some roast chicken and we like went and got broccoli somewhere because it seemed very American. <laughs> we tried to teach them about those sorts of things. I remember spending a Thanksgiving in, um, Thanksgivings in California with friends where I couldn't go home, but never really actually doing the Thanksgiving day on your own, right? Um, I got the things though, because even for Zoom's giving, one must have green bean casserole. So I've got the French fried onions, I've got the green beans, I've got the Campbell's cream of mushroom soup. Um, again, we're not messing around with off brands here. I got the Jiffy corn pudding to make the corn casserole. I got like a little Trader Joe's turkey. Like I'm literally going to be eating these things for the next 14 days. Um, and maybe in all the Zoom boxes with my friends out in California who are more locked down than we are, my friends in Oklahoma who are less locked down and kind of suffering a lot of the consequences, to be able to have this strange um, coming together of all of these people in a way that maybe I might not if I wasn't on Zoom, right? The Thanksgiving table is something that we often think about as being a coming home, right? <laughs> I think it's no um, accident that um, Ezekiel talks about food a lot in this passage because food and water are some of the most literal things that every human being needs, <laughs> right? Um, we need food, maybe not green bean casserole, maybe not spaghetti casserole, but something, you know? Even if it's just bread and water, the food of the poor. I um, wonder about the fact that so many religious holidays are marked by meals. <laughs> Some of uh, my Jewish friends shared a post online this week that said, you know, we Jews have done all of our most important holidays already this year. We did Seders over Zoom. We did Yom Kippur. Uh, we did all of those things just in a different way. I think about uh, communion, the Lord's Supper, which um, for reasons of health and safety and all of those things, we haven't really had in person 
breaking off bread and sharing it um, in coming up on nine months. I can't help but think that with God saying that he will feed us, <laughs> that I am hungry. And I wonder if you are hungry too. We have this image in this country of this kind of first Thanksgiving meal. And even though that is, I heard this week a writer say, even though those of us, especially in the past year, as we thought about race and racial justice and all of that, we know that this is not the idyllic thing where people um, sat around a table and held, you know, held hands and all of that. They said, um, this writer said that they think that one of the reasons why that kind of idyllic image of that meal takes such hold in our hearts is because it is an image of hope of what we long to be true, right? <laughs> an image of everyone having enough, an image of clean water for the women in Africa and other parts of the world who have to walk miles and miles and miles. An image of food for the folks in, I believe it's Houston, who I saw a video um, that um, Tyler Perry's studio was giving away free turkey dinners, and you can see it. They are lined up for miles, people who are hungry and don't have enough money to place a target order for their families. People who are away from their families in prison, <laughs> in hospitals, in nursing homes, and all of that, and to all of that I say, God, you say that you are our great shepherd. Won't you feed us? Won't you give us what we need? Ezekiel talks about a shepherd to come who will give the people what they need. And this phrase just stood out to me this week. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured, I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. And then this phrase, I will feed them with justice. Sometimes that word is righteousness. It just means that not only will God feed us, not only does God call us as God's people, that God calls leaders to make the world more just, um, God is not just creating a world where we give to a food pantry every now and then and it makes us feel good. God is creating a world in which there don't need to be any food pantries because everybody has their own enough to eat, enough to feed their families, that nobody has to wait in a line for something. Justice, as one um, scholar and writer, Cornell West says, is what love looks like in public. <laughs> it's like that phrase, um, um, they talk about, you know, um, you teach a man, um, you give a man a fish and you can feed him for a day, but you teach a man a fish, and teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. <laughs> well, I recently heard kind of an improvisation on that. They said, yes, and also, um, it's a whole lot easier to learn how to fish if you're not starving. <laughs> and so maybe this is the both and that Jesus, our King, calls us to in this season, to maybe share our fish or our green bean casserole or the money that we have, the love that we have, the Zoom account that we have. <laughs> but also, how can we work to make sure that, like Ezekiel says, nobody's water is being trampled on. <laughs> I love that image, right? Because um, have you ever had disgusting, dirty shoes before? I do, right now. They, are, they have been sticking into dirt and sand and mud all day, the heels of these boots. And so I'm just trying to think about what it would look like if I had like a nice pristine water bowl <laughs> to give to someone and I just stuck my disgusting boot in it. That's what Ezekiel says um, is what the leaders of his time, the people and pastors, priests of his time were doing. That they were kind of sticking their dirty shoes, trampling over the things for people who were the least and the lost. I um, wonder, this Christ the King Sunday, this um, Thanksgiving week, as we lean forward into Advent and start to think about holidays in the midst of this strange COVID season where it feels like all the rules are constantly being rewritten and we have to keep trying to adapt every time. 
What does it mean to be partners with Jesus, our King, in trying to make the world look a little bit more like heaven? I, um, a couple of weeks ago in Sundays at Six, we talked about, you know, not being so, the phrase, don't be so heavenly minded that you're of no earthly good. <laughs> um, but I saw a, another improvisation of that by um, an artist named Danielle Koch who um, does artwork on Instagram. A lot of it is about justice and love, compassion and anti-racism work. And um, she posted, she says, be so heavenly minded that you're up to a lot of earthly good. <laughs> that idea that when we look at this, that can give us an image of what our lives can look like now. <laughs> it probably will not look like a, a table, like a huge crowded table with a lot of people because that's actually less loving and less charitable <laughs> than Christ would call us to. But it might look like giving up something of our own so that we can live more simply and others can simply live. And I think sometimes God is calling us to listen to voices of people who are um, maybe kind of overlooked. I started thinking about some of those overlooked voices um, while thinking about Thanksgiving this week, listening to a couple of podcasts. Um, it turns out that, um, do you know the person that is responsible for the holiday of Thanksgiving? It's, it was um, a, days of Thanksgiving were kind of called since George Washington um, was president. And it became an official kind of holiday in the time of Abraham Lincoln. But it wasn't Abraham Lincoln's idea. It was this campaign of um, a woman named Sarah Josepha Hale who decided that um, she was kind of, you know, she was maybe not the least and the last and the loss that Jesus was talking about. She might have been one of those people that, you know, was living high on the hog, so to speak, um, to be super folksy about it. She wrote this kind of etiquette guide magazine called the Godie's Ladies Book in the Civil War era. Um, but she was convinced, she was convinced that um, the nation would benefit from having a day to give thanks. And so she kind of did her form of lobby and women didn't have the vote back then, but she, um, she continued to advocate and write for this. And so, um, during the period of the Civil War, it was signed, um, this became, Thanksgiving became a national holiday um, by a proclamation from President Abraham Lincoln. But that leader <laughs> listened to someone who didn't even have the option to cast a vote for him. Maybe this is the kind of shepherd that our Jesus is, right? We think of all of those forgotten voices for justice, all of those people who are out, who were out registering voters, all of the folks that are working in food pantries, all of the people who are handing out masks and turkeys who we will never know their name. And I wonder if we get close to them, maybe not physically close, but <laughs> close in our hearts, will they show us what God's kingdom is supposed to look like? There was another woman and I've forgotten her name already, but she was the head of the home economics department of the Campbell Soup Company in the year 1955. I'll have to look up your name or her name or maybe you will too. Uh, because um, she was given a task of finding this, uh, a home for this, this strange soup that they called the cream of mushroom soup. They were like, somebody needs to figure out a way to market this. And so they looked around, tried to figure it out. And there was, um, there was a woman who is now nameless to almost everyone, including me, that um, decided that she would create a dish called the green bean bake. She, um, and this, I heard this week was the primordial ooze from which emerged our beloved GDC, our beloved green bean casserole. And now this is responsible for 40% of the sales of cream of mushroom soup in the United States for people buying stuff for this dish. So maybe it's time to listen to the voices of people, to the ideas of people who might remain nameless, right? Friends, I hope that you enjoy your green bean casserole this week or your corn pudding. I heard in the first, in the early Thanksgivings, they ate a lot of eels apparently, and I hope you do not eat that. 
because that sounds very strange, although maybe you want to, and that's okay too. <laughs> but remember, like Jesus, our King, that God's world is made to, um, to be enough for everyone, for the rich and the poor, and maybe there won't be any of those distinctions any longer. For the suffering and the affluent, and maybe there won't be any of that too. <laughs> so that all God's children can live in peace. Amen. Sia santificato il tuo nome. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Thank you.
Sunday at 4 p.m. over in the gravel lot with your with your car. So um, do not do not worry about anybody being able to hear you sing because <laughs> only your family, if they are coming, or somebody inside your bubble already, and if they're in your bubble, then they love you. So. Um, Friends, I am um, just as a blessing this Thanksgiving week. Just want to read the end of this chapter of Ezekiel, and may you hear this as a promise for our world and for you. I will make with them a covenant of peace, so that they may live in the wild and sleep in the woods securely. I will make them and the region around my hill a blessing and I will send down the showers in their season and they shall be showers of blessing. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit and the earth shall yield its increase. They shall be secure and they shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their chains and save them from the hands of those who enslaved them. They shall no longer be plunder for the nations nor shall the animals devour them. They shall live in safety and no one shall make them afraid. I will provide for them a splendid vegetation so that they will no more be consumed with the hunger and no longer suffer the insults of the nations. They shall know that I, the Lord their God, am with them and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God says the Lord God. Friends, go now in peace. We'll see you next week for Worship on the Water.